Hello, oh, Haley. Hello, Lola. Thank you for being so de dedicated to the class. Uh, let me make your co hosts. Haley, co host. Hello, Vinjan. Thank you for joining. Hello, Professor. How are you? Good, how are you? Doing good, thank you. Uh, hello, Hanman. Nice, nice seeing you connected. Okay, I made uh, each of you a co-host, so if you see anyone uh, joining, please compete, whoever can admit uh, visitors, uh, the quicker the better. Um, I'm going to bring uh, up the slides in a, like minutes or like the seconds and um, the plan for today is to make a brief informal review of the uh, project and uh, then to go ahead with uh, um, completing the materials related to density functional theory to to finish to finish it completely and uh, starting from tomorrow we'll go we'll focus on the excited series for excited state or number one will be uh, time dependent density functional theory okay so uh, uh, Going to share screen. Okay, and let me check if, if the slide advancer helps. Oh yeah, excellent. So uh, we are in the computational chemistry class. The the goal is to. Uh, make such observables that uh, will agree with the experiment and uh, we are doing by uh, practicing different theories that are implemented in a, in a software and we are going over atomistic models so right now we are okay now I, I see benefits from the smart screen um, we have finished uh, manuals on, on VASP and this uh, semester it was two lectures inst instead of one and slightly different from previous years uh, I will have uh, last mm, meeting focusing on the DFT with, with uh, examples of explicit expressions for functionals and then we'll uh, go through a little bit of additional theories for excited states in this uh, uh, by going through the series uh, there will be two most important meetings in the semester so one important meeting when uh, all of us will bring drafts of the written reports and another most important meeting when there will be presentations so since uh, schedules are very scattered for all of us i suggest this most important meetings will be done at the at the lab time. So, um, April twenty seventh and May fifth, or whatever Wednesdays are. So, um, in uh, two weeks and two days, I am encouraging everyone to bring uh, a draft of report of the of the mini research. And in uh, three weeks and two days, we will do presentations on them. So uh, I believe uh, everyone, or almost everyone, has selected the uh, project. And please interrupt me and start a uh, launch discussion. I will speak as, as much as I can, but I, I would be very uh, happy to uh, hear interruptions. Uh, so I, I just symbolically uh, split the 
your choices on groups. So uh, Umar, Anand, uh, and uh, Saratoba do projects that focus primarily on, on binding energy. Uh, so it's they basically share similar similar uh, methods. Um, well, I didn't include here. Let, let me go, go. Let's go back. Um, what Venjan is doing can be also uh, placed in the same category of uh, um, looking on absorption and binding energy. So, if if you have absorption of uh, small molecules onto uh, clay material, um, uh, Hadassah is doing. Um, something that is most interesting personal for me, but uh, from year to year, it is different amount of people doing it. So it will be charge transfer on interface of two different nanomaterials. And then there will be at least three um, talks, three, three research directions, uh, which can be categorized as uh, optical, or well, as properties of metal organic complexes. When a single metal is surrounded by uh, organic ligands and uh, describe splitting of D levels and is responsible for the uh, optical properties. And um, so Heavy is doing traditional metal organic complexes. Adam is doing porphyrins where there are only four ligands in square planar. And Hanmant is doing near octahedral where ion uh, interacts uh, uh, with ligands coming from different amino acids from very long protein chain. Uh, if you see that I'm misrepresenting your talk, uh, feel free to interrupt me and uh, give comments because uh, you guys are experts in, in your research and uh, I'm not, I'm just observing and helping with, with little details. So uh, another group, there will be two uh, mini researchers, uh, one by Amir, another by Amara, dealing with uh, properties of uh, carbon and tubes defects and uh, adsorbates both covalent and uh, non-covalent uh, the target property is uh, photoluminescence efficiency. There will be uh, two research projects uh, by uh, Rizvi and, and uh, Payman that um, I categorize as an attempt to look onto percolation of moving of small ions through uh, like solid electrolytes through, through, through the substance which uh, mostly is based on molecular dynamics. But let's see what uh, the authors will, will tell when, when it will be their, their time to present. And uh, I believe everyone got the projects, but if, if you didn't, there are a um, couple uh, of ideas from previous years. And there, there are more than uh, those that I'm going to show. It, um, I'm just showing just in case. And uh, you guys have elected and selected something much better. So um, uh, perovskite is a, is, was and is famous material for photovoltaics. Uh, it promises to be better than silicon and uh, one can uh, prepare solid nanostructures like nanowires, nanosheets and nanowires and absorb uh, electron hole uh, acceptors on the surface. So. One can also replace lead into manganese and make it bright and optically active itself. So there are lead uh, ions of the hydro connected to iodine and there is a cesium in the center. And the cesium is not bound, it's cation not bound to anything and it is very, very polarizable. So it, it gives answer why it is so cool uh, for uh, extremely high photovoltaic efficiency. Uh, upon excitation, lattice is distorted. So it is uh, polaron or on the molecular language Frank Condon effect, which is uh, quite cool. So doping is another direction for this uh, perovskite uh, materials. Um, one can explore circular dichrims for nanotubes, but I'm not sure if anyone will select it. Um, 
there are options to look for catalysis in the organic uh, complexes. So there are some preliminary steps and, and the help is available. Um, one of the applications of metal organic complexes and uh, nanostructures is um, photocatalytic water splitting when uh, change of the charge of the oxidation state of metal center makes it catalytically active. So any reactant approaching the center uh, is activated by this metal and participates in reactions otherwise impossible. And uh, one of these types of reaction is uh, uh, generation of hydrogen and oxygen out of water, but there, there is an abundance of other reactions. Um, the biological cells, cells are covered by cell membranes, and uh, uh, these membranes are quite big and thick for um, uh, computational modeling, but it is possible. So it is. Um, hydrophobic, hydrophilic, uh, two layers uh, uh, lipid membrane. And the challenge, applicational challenge is to see whether it will survive adsorption to inorganic surface, which can be metal oxide or clay material. Uh, the thing on the bottom is a charge transfer between two uh, nanomaterials. It is something that, um, Hadassah is already, already doing in previous years, it was different pair of, uh, of materials. Okay. Other option, which I'm, I'm just need to declare it, but likely you guys already got uh, your project is to look on nanomaterials uh, uh, with low dimensionality, two dimensional, or um, this ruthenium, chloride or ruthenium bromide three is um, such material where each ion has unpaired spins and this unpaired spins interact to each other. So these materials are uh, in the unstable transition between uh, uh, different magnetic configurations and uh, it is uh, a challenging problem. So it is something where DFT may fail, but little steps in this direction are very cool and it is appreciated by community and publishable. And uh, here is a brief summary of, um, I believe someone already selected. So it is uh, activation of carbon nanotube emission by placing two defects on, on the surface. Yeah, and uh, this is old project of uh, catalysis on graphene with metal cluster, which uh, I think was already completed and published. Uh, okay, and th th those are projects from one of the previous years. Any uh, questions, comments? I believe everyone who is uh, on the connection right now have their projects, right? Uh, uh, I didn't have one yet because I, I lost. Uh... No, you, you, did you did you look uh, into the sign up list? Uh, yes, but I have no idea how we choose the product. So, uh, well, uh, you, you should you should have uh, volunteer, uh, voted at the day when we, we were selecting. But uh, let me stop recording for for uh, for a second, and then I will resume. Uh, how do you do it? Uh, pause resume recording. Share screen. Okay. Uh, Lola, you are completely uh, free to, to do whatever you like. So you are just auditing the course, but uh, uh, if you are interested, it's it's very much encouraged to try doing project because it we are setting up very uh, squeezed hard deadlines and doing things at a uh, given time is a is a great uh, momentum that bring all of us to the higher orbit. So uh, you're very welcome to try follow the same schedule if you're interested. Yeah, I did send you an email so, talking about something about quantum dots. So I, I don't know, maybe, maybe you missed it. Okay, we, we can talk one to one. I can stop by your office, but uh, uh, you are very welcome to, uh, 
guest and if you approve me i will give you an, an, like reminders and encouragements to keep the same pace and same schedule as everyone who takes this class for the grade thank you okay so uh a little bit on on the research procedure the uh Research is, is a very creative activity. There, is, there are no procedure, but we can select something common that maybe will help uh, us to uh, okay. to, go, to go forward and uh, complete things at, at a short time. So, one of the concepts and again please be critical and uh, i'm giving a disclaimer there are no prescriptions there are no algorithms for research what i'm uh, giving are only little like suggestions and uh, points to start thinking about so do not take it literally uh, your own creativity your own style of designing project and analyzing is is more more important so a very and after this disclaimer uh i want to say a very common motif in a lot of computational research is to see how the properties of two systems change if one connects them so basically it is a binding uh problem so if one deposits a molecule on a surface or places just two objects together the question is if the property of object a and object b are additive if we fuse them together if they start interacting will their common property reproduce individual properties or it will be something dramatically new so uh, the simplest thing of this hybrid heterogeneous uh, thing is to compute total energy of the hybrid interface, compute total energy of system A, system B, and subtract them from each other. So this difference in energy will be uh, zero if they are placed far from each other. It will be zero if they're completely neutral, if it will be like noble gas that do not participate in any activity. But as soon as any polarization ionic bond physisorption uh, or chemical bond is established between objects a and b this energy will be non-zero it will be uh, negative if they want to be together it will be positive if they repel and uh, binding energy is um, can be found experimentally in many ways like reactions kinetics depends because in order to activate a uh, reaction one needs to communicate energy related to to this binding energy so uh just by doing total energy of three three calculations system a system b and system a plus b and it is something interesting that you can report and compare to experiment so like venjan if you're doing uh, uh absorption of a molecule on a surface you do a surface without molecule surface with molecule and then molecule itself and compare them okay now, uh, if one follows this philosophical concept forwards, one can uh, look at the density of density of states for model A, density of states for model B, and then density of states of the hybrid of the interface. If they do not interact, it will be just arithmetic summation. If they do interact, it will be some mutual influence for the position and uh, uh, width of the peaks. Again, same for uh, absorption spectrum. Whether absorption spectrum of model A and model B is equal to their uh, fused heterogeneous hybrid. So uh, this is probably the simplest and uh, most common motif for any research. Just uh, divide and conquer. Divide your model on two pieces and look how these pieces interact with each other. Um, another motif. Uh, that uh, is also very very common and again i already gave disclaimer there are no motifs there are no for general flow charge it, it's only direction of thought one can look for 
response of a model to a temperature. So you prepare your model, you optimize geometry, you find your observables, and then in the second shoulder, you provide heating and molecular dynamics. And then after molecular dynamics or during molecular dynamics at some snapshots, you also compute observables. And then you compare the uh, observables for cold model and hot model. Why it should be different? First, any energies, any orbitals, any total energies fluctuate during uh, molecular dynamics. Second, uh, if the temperature is high enough, it may induce chemical reactions, adsorption, desorption, break or formation of chemical bonds. And then it will be dramatically different system. So we will see it in the, in the response. So it is another motif that we can uh, quickly do for any model and have uh, interesting results done in, in a week or two. And uh, if one selects uh, this um, motif, one can, um, oh, another motif. Uh, one can explore a response of a model to modification of the electronic configuration. So, one can take uh, your system in optimal geometry and then try excited by Fervia and see how excited uh, the model or forces correspond to excited state, how it changes interatomic distances and electronic structure. One can add spin pol polarization or, or uh, one can add or remove an electron and see what is, what is changing. And uh, for each of these configurations, one can go over like cold or thermal during molecular dynamics, look for density of space, spectra, uh, and, and uh, like orbitals. And I'm not asking everyone to do all of the steps. It's only ideas, what can be explored. And uh, if you select either one or another property, either one or another configuration, then one can do a comparison how the property responds to stimulus to whatever you change to to your model and this like structure to property or stimulus to property or configuration to property response is a very healthy approach to set up your computational experiment and do analysis and uh, in most cases uh, whatever you do in on, on this way for your model of choice is uh, valid publishable scientific result okay um, so from now on we are focusing on the completion of the research projects and uh, i'm uh, inviting everyone to bring uh, several figures uh, as we go in in two weeks and two days on the lab wednesday uh, April 27th. So while you're doing uh, this activity, research activity, please try to consolidate the results of your computations into figures and tables. And again, there are no exact requirements. It is suggested. So you can do up to seven figures. Please do not do more. Uh, so, uh, like more than seven figures is not uh, possible to, to grade and look through. If it is less, it is okay. More, please don't. So like up to seven figures and uh, one, one table. And then here is a suggestion what can be placed in these figures. Note that each figure may include more than one panels. Uh, so you can show G, uh, for example, figure one, geometries of your fragments A, B, and hybrid model. Uh, the energies and binding energies can be in a table. Density of states for hybrid and individual fragments can be placed in figure two. And here is uh, additional suggestions. So if you have no idea what to do, you can follow this. If you have your own uh, vision of a problem, please follow your vision. If you already know what to do, what to do. it is only a little backup. And, um, 
as we approach this date, I will also suggest to add very little writing, like uh, maybe caption to a figure and uh, like a couple of paragraphs description. So it will be a seed of the report for the class. Okay, so um, please stop me and ask any questions at any time. Uh, I don't see questions. If I do, if you type something in the chat line and I don't react, please raise your voice. So when we made last academic lecture uh, two weeks ago, I believe it was the last slide. So uh, two full charts hidden in in each other. So basically, it is what uh, most computational chemistry software is doing uh, for optimization or for molecular dynamics. So one starts with uh, geometry. And then um, inside one cycle for changing positions of ions, one has a unit for computing total energy through electronic structure, where one has like density, potential, quantum uh, uh, single electron equations, and then orbitals help to compute density. Based on the density, one computes total energy and new energy compared with old. If it is smaller than tolerance, the total energy is used as a point on the potential energy surface to recompute gradient and update the positions of ions. And by doing this uh, self-contained two cycles, one is coming to uh, optimal geometry, optimal total energy, and as a, as a benefit, uh, a list of orbitals, right? So it is what we do in... Uh, Gaussian, if you select DFT, uh, like U, B, uh, PB, PB, or whatever your uh, selected choice, and what, what we do with VASP. Um, I never showed in the lab, but our repository of the INCARS does include uh, INCARS that allow to compute uh, electronic structure with hybrid functionals. And if you're doing like detailed analysis of a smaller model, one can redo things with uh, uh, different functionals. It will, it will be a good argument to argue with reviewers if you submit your paper for true publication. Okay, so uh, now we have about 20 minutes for actual lecture. So at, by the time of today's lecture, I'm going to declare the end of DFT, not the end of DFT as a uh, theory, but completion of the DFT in our set of uh, um, meetings and, and, and lectures. So if the equations that I'm showing right now are okay with you, you can either disconnect or fall asleep or just enjoy and comparing what, what uh, is provided with, with your expectations. So there are four equations and there will be nothing more than background for, for these equations. So uh, there, in the top line, there is an equation for total energy as functional of density, and spin polarization density. And this is done for the uh, LDA, local density approximation functional with spin. Therefore, it is LSDA. So it is spin polarized calculations when you can describe triplets, doublets, and so forth. So uh, as we go, I'm going to justify this equation and explain what is this Greek letter uh, Xi stands for which is a subtraction of the uh, density for of electrons with alpha spin projection and uh, density of all electrons with beta spin projection. If a model is in a singlet configuration, this parameter will be equal to zero and the whole uh, bracket will be canceled. So it will be also only total density in, in the power uh, for third. The bottom line show 
an example. So once again, on the top, it is local density approximation when energy depends only on power of the density. So density at different points of space. In the bottom line, we have example of a functional from uh, so-called GGA, generalized gradient approximation. So here, the expression for, uh, I, I want to give a, a, a note, on the top line, it is total energy. Here, it is the potential. And very often, uh, people uh, give uh, equations for potential rather than total energy. And I will show their connection in the uh, next slide or two. So, in the bottom line, bottom, uh, yes, bottom row, the potential which is connected to energy depends not only on the total density, but also on the variable x here, there, and there, which is triangle row. So triangle, inverted triangle, is a, stands for gradient, and it is a three-dimensional derivative. So gradient, uh, three-dimensional derivative, is a thing that is used uh, when uh, converting potential energy into, uh, into force, right? Uh, Vengen, is concept of gradient okay with you? Okay, Hanmand? Okay, Haley, Lola, are you comfortable with gradient? Uh, okay, yeah, thank you, thank you. <laughs> I, I especially appreciate the applaud. <laughs> um, how do we do it? Yeah, making it smaller and hiding. Okay, so gradient derivative of density uh, is used uh, here. So it's not only the, uh, local, but also gradient. And therefore, it is general gradient approximation, generalized gradient approximation. Most functions that we use uh, uh, fit into this category, but the equation is uh, a little bit more complicated. It's like four or five uh, pages of, of equations. But general idea is that they just use uh, the gradient. So uh, not long enough, we were doing images like this in, in the labs. So um, neutral, cation, anion, and excited. And we, you, you guys were presenting that uh, for anion, there is additional state in conduction band. For cation, there is a missing population in the valence band. For excited, is promotion from uh, valence to uh, excited. And if we do have non-singlet configuration, uh, like triplet, there is a withdrawal of population in the beta spin valence band and promotion to alpha spin in the uh, conduction band. So the uh, considerations that I'm going to give for next few minutes will be focused on how the functionals and how this functional theory addressing this uh, features. So when we try to visualize it, we are using not only total density for each orbital, but uh, summation and subtraction. So one can either show uh, density for spin alpha or density of spin beta or the uh, summation or subtraction. So it is what VMD is offering us to do. So those two representations, alpha orbital, beta orbital on one hand and total and spin density are uh, mutually, uh, they, they replace, replace each other. They both mean the same thing. But uh, I'm talking a little bit about spin polarization density because this parameter is directly, is directly used in the expressions for functionals. Okay. 
And if you are plotting orbitals by VMD, it asks you alpha plus beta, alpha minus beta, alpha only, beta only, right? You saw it. Okay. Okay. Let's see. If so here is uh, a little comment on the uh, connection between total energy and potential. This is something that we did cover, but I, I want to quickly remind. So uh, in the Thomas Fermi theory, and the total energy is integral of density into the power of five over three over whole space in local density approximation, which is derived a little more thorough and includes electron electron interaction. The energy is uh, same style integral of total density in the power of four third over whole space. So uh, local density approximation is a fundamental for any uh, higher class high level functionals. And let's look on it just quickly. Uh, so highlights are a little bit, yeah, not everything is, is seen well on the, on the screen, but um, the, um, density into the power four thirds can be represented as density in power one times density in power one third, right? And then uh, density in, in the power one can be combined Oh, it's nice, very nice. I can draw here. Can be combined into increment of the uh, of the density, right? And now, if you want to uh, practice the function of derivative of total energy over increment of density, then just out of here, we will get density into power one third. So uh, therefore, uh, the total energy in uh, local density approximation will be uh, rho in total energy, uh, energy, total energy is uh, rho to the power four thirds and the potential will be uh, total density in the power one third. Okay. It was just connection of um, density, oh, total energy and potential. Now, these features are needed for uh, radicals and magnetic materials. When amount, when spins are unpaired, on some uh, orbitals, there are unpaired spins. About four weeks ago, we went over this little uh, wizard that converts um, the all into Skylark. So there are operators, spin operators that act only on uh, spin component. And it is used when uh, for this description of such uh, magnetic related experiments as EPR and NMR. By the way, I'm going to give about five boring slides. So if, uh, if you want only the summary, you can just take it easy for the next five minutes. So the projections of the It works. Projections uh, of the magnetization are constructed of spin raised, uh, raising and spin lowering operators uh, in the in the following conditions, and uh, they are needed to describe spin states and transitions between them. If one is dealing with uh, spins, then most correct description is to replace one orbital number, let's say I, by two 
components, num orbital number i with projection spin alpha and, and an orbital number i with spin projection beta. Um, the most advanced concept is a concept of so-called spinners, when orbital uh, contains both alpha and beta projections. And if one orbital contains both alpha and beta projection, then scalar product of orbital number i times uh, itself will be practiced as a scalar product. So it, it should give orthogonality. So uh, component alpha uh, with conjugation to itself, component beta to conjugation with itself uh, will be given given density for orbital. And if you make summation over all, all orbitals, it will be uh, total density. Um, if one wants to be very general, I see, um, oh, someone admitted uh, Amara. Amara, you're, you're, you're welcome. And you joined at the most challenging and most boring slide. So if an orbital is represented by so-called spinner with both alpha and beta electrons, one formally can practice dyadic product of this uh, spin components. And then one is getting four possible products. So orbital I uh, projection alpha, conjugated I alpha, I projection beta, conjugated I projection beta, and cross terms. I alpha, I beta, I beta, I alpha. So these four products are most full, most, most complete representation of uh, uh, the orbitals uh, if, if you want to take into account spin. So this representation includes spin alpha and spin beta densities that we, we use for total density. But in addition, it has cross terms, alpha, beta, beta, alpha. Things that we do in this class never touch this cross terms. This we are using only spin polarized DFT. These cross terms are uh, used only in the non collinear spin, which includes spin orbit coupling. But I want briefly mention in case some of you will uh, use it in the in the future. And uh, this spin components are needed uh, for situation when a model is placed in the magnetic field. We do not have magnetic field explicitly added in most or in all DFT codes, but based on the magnetization, we can tell how a model uh, that we compute will follow Zeeman splitting, will sp split uh, energy levels in the magnetic field. So here is the freshman chemistry and freshman physics uh, equation so that uh, if we have a spin or magnetic dipole in a magnetic field, then its energy is uh, uh, computed this way. So here is a scalar, scalar product. which means spin uh, has three projections, magnetic field has three projections, and we have uh, we can write down equation this way. If our um, magnetic dipole and are, is oriented along magnetic field, we have only Z projection of magnetic field and Z projection of, of a dipole. So uh, then knowledge about spin projection allows to assess whether this molecule or this uh, material will show splitting uh, of energies in magnetic field. So one can, and it is a boring stuff. I will return back to something practical in, in two minutes, very, very shortly. So any observable in quantum mechanics is computed as a sandwich, bra and cat, conjugated wave function, uh, operator wave function without conjugation. If we are 
in the representation representation of spinners which we are not touching in any of our practical calculations it is only a little uh, heads up then we practice this uh, recipe in the following way so spinner operator spinner and uh, in the discrete basis operator is represented with matrix elements alpha 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 beta beta alpha beta beta so matrix elements in this spinner basis the same recipe to get uh, expectation value can be formulated in the framework of the density matrix where one uh, takes this components and uh, uses the trace of uh, of this product of the two matrices so just one multiplies these two matrices and then takes summation of the diagonal elements so uh, these two approaches are identical sarah uh, thank you for joining very happy to see you connected and uh, you and tamara did join at the most boring and most technical and uh, uh, challenging part I will, I will finish and go to more practical things in the, in a minute so spinners for spin orbit coupling uh, and for non-collinear spin can be used to find how the energies of this model will be split in a magnetic field so if you need to compute the expectation value of z uh, projection of spin we can take uh, the matrix corresponding to s sub z operator we take this four spinner projections we take summation of the diagonal uh, element and then we have one half density alpha alpha minus density beta beta so it is a little demonstration that spin polarization that subtraction of densities for alpha and beta will be responsible for uh, magnetic properties for splitting of the energies in presence of magnetic field once again uh, present public and commercial dft codes do not include magnetic field explicitly but based on subtraction of alpha and beta projection based on magnetization one can assess uh, splitting in the magnetic field and it is one of the major motivations to study non-singlet uh, um, non-singlet configurations now uh, i'm returning back to more simple and practical things so we did forget or did leave behind spinners we go to our old good spin polarized dft so we do have uh, density of all electrons with alpha projection so it is density of orbital one two up to homo alpha by the way uh, homo alpha and homo beta can be different for projection b it is summation of uh, all uh probability densities all orbitals squared up to homo beta so homo beta and homo alpha may have a different number if one integrates uh, these densities um, integration of rho alpha will give number of alpha electrons and it, it will be equal to homo alpha because uh, one electron upon integration gives one right and for by integration uh, rho beta uh, when we get number of electrons in in beta component which is equal to homo beta so uh, the subtraction of number electrons with alpha spin projection and number of electrons with beta spin projection is referred to as uh, an up down parameter and one can set it up when preparing uh, spin polarized calculation so we, we were doing it in the lab and uh, when we set up this two numbers being non-equal it means we are going to study magnetic materials or radicals um, so summation of these two densities and in, in integral 
of the summation will give total number of electrons, uh, subtraction of these two densities, and in subsequent integration will give us spin polarization, number of unpaired spins. And just a little practical thing that uh, was already reported in your nice uh, talks uh, previous week. So um, this here is subtraction spin polarization. If you divide it by two, it will be uh, total length of a spin vector. Multiplicity is computed as 2s plus 1. And uh, here are the examples. So uh, spin polarization 0 singlet on the 1 uh, state, uh, 1 half the doublet, two possible states up and down, 1 triplet. It can be up, down, and uh, in the middle. And one can go, uh, go ahead forward with uh, higher spin multiplicity. So it is possible to normalize spin density, the subtraction of two densities, by um, dividing by total density. It is needed just to make sure it is smaller than one. If so, uh, let me check uh, if anyone is yet in, in, in the class or, or someone who already. Okay. Uh, we still have five minutes uh, formal, and I will try to finish uh, the thought so that we, we have this thing uh, done. Okay. Um, we do divide subtraction by summation to have spin density normalized. If we do have the spin density defined, we can reconstruct alpha and beta spin back. So if you do spin uh, density plus one and we open open brackets we will get the uh, alpha spin divided by total and if you multiply uh, spin density plus one multiply by total density we will get spin alpha and same uh, simple mathematical uh, protocol if we uh, sub make spin density minus one and multiply it by rho, we will get beta spin. So when in the VMD, when you're plotting orbitals and you're selecting alpha, beta, alpha plus beta, alpha minus beta, it means the code just practices the simple equations. It's not a big wonder. It just selects representations that is more comfortable for humans. Okay, so here is the summary. What is spin polarization uh, density, spin up density, spin down density? And uh, the local density approximation uh, is total density in the power uh, four thirds, which is equivalent to a potential, which is equal rho to one third uh, functional integral over increment of, of density. Now, if we plug in the expression for uh, total density, if we add contributions, if you assume that energy of spin alpha and energy of spin beta do not interact and contribute equally, then uh, it will be same functional for alpha and same functional for beta. And then by using conversion between spin polarization uh, density and total density, we can replace uh, alpha density and beta density by these green boxes. Right? And it is basically what was introduced to all of us at the, at the beginning, at the first slide. So total energy of the system uh, is composed as two integrals, one integral of uh, density to power four thirds times uh, one plus spin polarization. And second part, uh, rho times four thirds uh, times one minus uh, spin polarization in, in the power four thirds. So just contribution from alpha and spin, spin densities. And therefore, 
one is using the letter S. So if you are running uh, Gaussian, one of your options is LSDA. You can notice it in the drop down menu. Okay, almost there. Yeah, this LSDA functional. And uh, the uh, thing in the brackets is dimensionless. If we describe singlet, it, it will be zero. So here is an, an example of one of the simplest um, generalized gradient functionals. So if we need total energy, we just take this uh, uh, potential and integrate it with, uh, with density. So um, the same as previously, main term is rho to the power one third. Uh, by doing integration, it will come to the power four thirds. And the term in the brackets will come to zero if gradient is equal to zero. If uh, this um, gradient is non-zero, there will be correction, uh, small correction to, to this uh, functional. So there is no time to uh, go over derivations of these functionals, but it is a good piece of bread for generations of uh, theoretical scientists, how to derive these equations and provide simple, simple equations that practical applied uh, scientists will enjoy. Um, just to enable uh, a chance for you guys to read uh, specialized literature, here are some common notations uh, for developers of functional. So uh, here, spin polarization that we just used, here is total density, and uh, there are different combinations of the density and spin polarization that are inserted in the expressions of for functionals to make it uh, simple and self-contained. So uh, Fermi energy and Fermi wave number can be expressed in ten terms of density. Uh, and there are uh, reduced gradient is X parameter that we just uh, used in the uh, demonstrated functional. And it is the whole world. There are people who devote their life from 20 years old to 90 years old just to develop functionals. And we, as applied scientists, appreciate their effort. Um, yeah, and here are just abbreviations of what this uh, hyperbolic functions are. So these explicit equations for getting the energy, total energy out of total density is a practical step that is needed to implement the full chart of uh, Kohn-Schramm DFT. So we are borrowing it. it. It is already tabulated in the uh, codes. It is derived by uh, certain uh, approximations and we just using it. It's, uh, it's not possible for this short course to go over them, but uh, uh, so here, is the end of the meeting. Uh, everyone is welcome to disconnect and uh, I will stay here and answer questions if any. If you joined later at the beginning of the meeting, uh, there was a brief overview of uh, selection of projects and research protocols. So uh, everyone is, uh, if, you, if you joined later, you're encouraged to watch the recording. So meeting is done. Uh, if there are questions, please ask. If there are no questions, feel free to disconnect. Um, hello, Professor. Yeah, hello, Sarah. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? Um, I, have a, I have a question, two questions, actually. Uh -huh, uh, okay. So the homework, when I open the PDF, it says something, and in the email, it says another something. Please repeat. Um, Do you want to share a screen and show something? Um, let me show you. Yes, yeah, let, let, let me make sure you are your co-host. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing. And...
make you co-host, you are co-host and Amara, you are co-host too. Okay, yeah. So this is the attachment to the email. Uh, is this the homework or just a... Oh, okay, okay. Now I, now I understand the, 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 the question. Okay, so um, I do... <laughs> It's a little challenging for myself to categorize. It is um, special assignment, which is a step towards a report on the research projects. It is due in, uh, uh, I believe, 16 days, right? Mm -hmm. 15 days. And basically it is a core of your written reports. So by the time of the lab uh, in whatever, in two weeks, uh, I expect everyone to complete all calculations, summarize it in form of figures, and start writing a report. Mm -hmm. So uh, I understand it is quite challenging, but it is not a true papers. It is uh, a little mock papers for the class. So just do a little uh, calculations, uh, little simple figures, and start a uh, procedure of describing them. So uh, what about after serialization? If my system, I want to serialize my system. Um, so I will explain right now, but I was trying to explain it during the class as well. So. Oh, so um, I, I can watch the video and save your time. It's okay. Yeah, but I, I can briefly repeat. So uh, suppose you have absorbed your uh, arsenide on the top of the silver cluster, found your, your optimized geometry. And then again, it is not mandated, it is only option, but you can try to heat it up and see if heating will help to desorb your molecule or maybe heating will break it on, a, on pieces. So mm -hmm. just explore how molecular dynamics will change geometry and eventually electronic structure of a model. Uh, what what you can do, what you can plan, is to start this calculation like now or tomorrow, in the longer queue, and then in a week or two, see uh, if it is complete and if you see anything interesting. If it is interesting, you report it. You include it into the into your written report. If it is boring, if you do not see anything, you just skip it. Mm -hmm. I ran a few simulations, but uh -huh. uh, when I run our big box with uh, the mo water molecule or arsenic, or arsenic uh, all of them are failed. Okay. Um, I did a couple of uh, runs in this directory and they, they didn't fail. Let's go into uh, hybrid ASO4. This one? Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I guess I opened this one. Um, uh, uppercase. Let's try once again. Yes, see this, please. Uh -huh. What's going on? Oh, okay. I'm already in the directory. <laughs> yeah, I got it. Okay. Yeah, is this one? Okay, and let's do tail Ozzy car or tail out car. Just tail. Okay. So it is a successful completion. Um, here it doesn't show reach required accuracy. Yes, because uh, you know, can you do more more in car? So I, I did put NSW80. So uh, um, let me request um, control and just continue. So um, I don't want to mess with uh, regular queue. I do things only in, in debug to, to do like quick tests. So um,
increasing the time step and Um, professor, here, um, when I press escape in my system, it doesn't work. I have to, to press control C and then I write down, uh, yeah. Okay, yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. And uh, concurrent to postcard. Uh, and then run. So I, I do several steps with increasing, several runs with increasing time step. Uh, and then uh, eventually it will come to conversion of the geometry. Mm -hmm. But it, um, okay. okay, it's over the running. So it's uh, delays a little bit because it, it records uh, the density. But uh, if later on, if it, it writes down the density too frequent, but later on we can have it in hand if you suddenly need it. If you do not like uh, this delay, you can just uh, like make false for this uh, wave car charge and uh, potential. So true, it means it uh, updates uh, density for if, if you later on need to plot it. But if you want a quicker performance, just replace true to false. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. So most delay is not for computation, but for uh, writing files, which uh, takes time. And computation itself should be should be quite quick. And you see the uh, this uh, number is proportional to is not equal, but proportional to number of orbitals that is needed for successful conversion. And if it is smaller than thousand, it means it will be very quick calculation. So uh, I have no doubts uh, this calculation will, will uh, converge. Here, I, uh, there are no hydrogens. It's only arsenicum and four oxygen. Yeah. The smallest but why did you do the system like huh? that? Why did you do the system like that? Um, because uh, it is the smallest uh, uh, arsenide containing group that uh, can be found in uh, ambient conditions. If you will have just arsenide itself and uh, in a wet environment, it will, it will result in this group naturally. So it will, it will um, convert nearby water to this uh, uh, ASO4. So other, other groups are less uh, stable. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's probably the, the smallest, the simplest good uh, starting point. So if my report will consist of the cluster and the molecule alone, and then the molecule was the cluster. Yes. Uh, classical and MD, that's enough, right? No, no, no classical MD, uh, only ab initial MD. Yeah, ab initial MD and uh, DFT. Yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think it uh, here it writes down the charge uh, each 10 steps. Mm -hmm. But you can modify it and uh, yeah, it, it will converge uh, rather sooner, rather sooner than later. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Okay, you can stop sharing. Uh, uh, Amara, do you have questions? Yes, Professor, I have a question about my model. Uh -huh. Like how I can uh, 
like combine them just like the wrap the dna onto the nanotube oh okay okay you mentioned that um, hypercam like I don't have hypercam, but I tried it Avogadro or VMD, but it's not working. It's just like this way. Okay. Uh, I will try to help uh, when when we are done with this meeting from my office, but let me quickly do something. Um, repeat. It's just cytosine uh, 20. Yes, yes, it, it's excellent. So. Um, I didn't combine them. I just optimized the matrix. So, uh, yes, so. yeah, it, it, it's great. Do not, do not worry, do not worry. So, uh, select. And I will do something only for demonstration. It will be this error, so do, do not take whatever comes out of this uh, simulation or this building. Okay. So what one can uh, create a geometry so that they're close enough and they can start interacting and op uh, optimizing in the right way. And uh, optimization in Avogadro will not work. You, uh, one would need more powerful uh, force field optimizer. Oh, okay. So we, we can try doing something here and it will create a mess because you see a, a misplaced couple of atoms. Yeah. Um, so it will maybe we can save uh, save as uh, under new model. Please do it. Uh, otherwise, I will click something wrong. Please save a copy. Save as. Just test CNT test something like. Okay, and now uh, we can. Start Start optimizing, but it will be uh, something ugly, and it will be not quick because uh, Avogadro is not uh, perfect. Yes. So uh, when we uh, use the geometry optimization in the like um, in the VASP, so it will not. Optimize the geometry when we run the job. Wait, um, I believe you do have access to additional tools for force field uh, geometry optimization, like lamps or maybe some other codes. Yes. So between Avogadro and VASP, you need to run uh, optimization with other tools. Okay. And then take what uh, whatever comes from optimization with lumps, okay. convert it into VASP format, and then uh, do a, like maybe quick fine tuning of optimization with VASP or immediately electronic structure exploration because this size of the systems will optimize quite long in VASP. Therefore, we need a force field. Okay, okay, I tried with lamps. Okay, and. Um, Please remind me, uh, maybe in 10, 20 minutes, I'm, uh, after I'm done with uh, this meeting, I will go to the office and plan to send you another email about options. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, are we done? Yes. Done? Okay, yeah, thank you.